Hello and welcome back to the Digital Health and Wearables series. Today I have another magnificent guest and episode for you, but before I go ahead and introduce the guest, make sure you subscribe to the channel, always also check all the magnificent content prior to that, and let me also acknowledge our partners, the Digital Health Platform, Clinitouch V, and our health partner, 10X Health System. And today gives me great pleasure to introduce you to Dr. Rizwan Malik. He's a radiologist, health, tech, and AI innovation and strategy consultant. Dr. Rizwan, how are you? Very well, thank you. It's a pleasure to meet you, Joe. Oh, brilliant. I've been following your great work. Thank you so much for accepting my invite. Not at all, likewise. Brilliant. And today we are here to talk about radiology, AI, artificial intelligence, and health tech. And I'm going to go straight to the questions. Is that yeah. okay? Of course. So the first question that I have for you is, what's happening in the radiology innovation world right now? So that's a good question. I think the main thing to understand is how radiology has changed in terms of accessibility. And maybe that will explain some of the innovations that we're looking at. In the past, it was very much you had to go to a center, either to a hospital or to a specialist diagnostic center to get all the imaging done. And then there was a very clear pipeline of getting those to radiologists or reporting radiographers to report. Now there's a greater shift to make, to move the radiology, not just in hospitals, but out into the community as well. So of course, and, and care isn't delivered in any one hospital now. We have regional or specialist networks which are forming. So the first change has been the shift from standalone siloed radiology centers to networks, distributed networks. And I think that is really useful for better and more consistent patient care. They don't have to travel so far. You can have care near you. You can um, also share the workload with more specialists. Um, the next part, I guess, is what's changing within the systems themselves. And again, we've got a number of quite exciting changes, which some of the PACS um, supplies are working on. The first one is just as we move from green screens to far more dynamic um, computers, we've moved our reporting uh, um, from a very stable words only scenarios now to far more dynamic multimedia type reports, um, as well as a little bit more flexible template and structured reporting. This means that whoever's receiving the report as well can understand what it is we're trying to say with the benefit of pictures. We don't have to use words to describe things on a screen, such as you know where you find a pathology, you can use hyperlinks and clicks. And the value of using some of these structures is that when you move from one institution to another, people can understand what is being said in a far more consistent format. It's not, you know, you and I um, we'll speak to each other and over time we will understand each other's language and nuances. If I then go somewhere else, potentially another clinician has to relearn some of the things I might say compared to one of the other colleagues. Whereas actually, if we can find a, a, lang a lingua franca of the reporting much as the same as the radiology images are in a standardized format, I think this will make a healthcare safer and more consistent. And of course, all the images will allow us to you know, make it a little bit more um, interactive and more attractive to look at as well. Oh, brilliant. Rizwan, thank you so much for those insights. So clear benefits for both sides and also a shift in way care is delivered in this particular case around radiology innovation. Thank you so much. The second question that I have for you is, what's the real value of AI in healthcare? Ah, the million dollar question, <laughs> and I, literally. Um, so there are a few, and I think that probably a follow-on will be how close are we to delivering them? The problem I think is that we started out with AI as this all-encompassing, will do everything, will take over everything. And that image, because it was needed to foster engagement in investment um, from people who probably didn't understand radiology, it led to inflated expectations. And of course, when you can't meet them, it led to massive disillusionment. Um, and the outset, there was always this confrontational approach, this sort of Skynet, we will um, 
put these humans out of business. The real benefit, actually, I think is twofold. The first one is to enable wider access to healthcare in resource poor communities so that, you know what, if you only have, for example, one doctor, doesn't have to be a radiologist, who is managing a huge um, rural um, or low uh, income uh, population, they can get access to help with imaging to enable to treat their patients rather than having to send images, take a week to go to the nearest city, get reports, come back. And of course, you know, patients can deteriorate in a long time. And if you consider something like TB, how many people will you have infected in that time and lost a follow-up doing it? So that's one aspect. The other one is this realization that as machines get faster and faster, and as uh, as imaging gets more sophisticated, people rightly want more and more imaging. But the growth of radiologists isn't anywhere near quick enough to take up the slack. I mean, if we have a 10% year-on-year, very conservative 10% year-on-year increase in the um, d capacity of imaging, radiologists are nowhere near, you know, we're talking 1% at best increase. And so we have this widening gap. So anything AI can do to make what we do more consistent, and, you know, I go back to what we just talked about, even with the um, multimedia or, or the and advances in radiology itself. A lot of what I do in the chest radiology sometimes is describing nodules. Here's the location, here's the size, here's how it's changed. That isn't a good use of my time. It isn't a good use of human brain power either. Whereas if you could take something sophisticated like a, a CT scan, remove the elements which are repeatable and, dare I say, mundane, measuring things, and allow me to use the same amount of time I've got to look at the things which a computer can't do in a narrow focus, that means I, for the same number of people, can be more efficient. And this is the kind of thing which you have to understand the domain to understand the value uh, of the AI can bring into it. And in the longer term, it, it means that there is money to be made because we can shift a lot more work, we can engage with patients better, we can make it safer. But of course, that doesn't really lend itself to great pitch decks and you know shiny blingy things. So we have this rather strange scenario where I think over the past year things have changed for the better. AI companies now are more interested in understanding the bottlenecks and what needs to be done rather than trying to pitch to us about what they've developed and what they want us to take up. And this, I think, is probably a real seminal moment in AI and imaging. It means we can properly use it for, for benefits to patients and for the users. That's brilliant. I really like what you mentioned about AI. Well, at the beginning, nobody knew about AI because it's new. And, and they are very, actually very, I'm sure you agree with this, very few people actually doing things in AI. There's a lot of people talking about AI. And, and and we we turning a corner. I do agree with you, but I really like what you mentioned about being a resource to be used in terms of scalability, addressing several issues, but also being used, for example, you mentioned the rural areas that you can address more people and the, these capabilities in, in terms of scaling and, and getting more value to patients is extremely, extremely important. Th thank you so much. Um, and the AI is a kind of a, bu a buzzword that everybody uses, but sometimes out of context. It becomes a bit of a fashion word, a fashion word in the industry. And the, uh, Rizvan, the, the third and last question that I have for you is, what is considered red type that uh, might work against industry innovation and slows down adoption? So the first one, I think, is something you've already said. Um, this concept... Um, where, you know, it works in some other sectors, fake it until you make it. So people have been talking about this, for, you know, going back, going back to 2016, 2017, you know, these great well-renowned professors who were talking about it, taking over the roles, how the whole industry of radiology and radiology will become obsolete. Um, now, that fine is great to make domain awareness, but it, it, it's been an inhibitor. It, it creates an antagonistic um adversarial environment. So who wants to engage with something which is going to put you out of a job? Um, and then of course, when you do try and deploy it, what you get is people try and find faults with it to prove that you know we're better than this IA can be rather than trying to work together to make things work. Again, now slowly, slowly, 
firstly, frankly, because the hype has failed, which is good. Um, we're getting to the point where very, very clever people, I mean, the data scientists, the people who devise these algorithms are, are, are sitting down with clinicians and saying, tell us what your bottlenecks are. Tell us what you want us to address for you. And also we get to the opportunity to engage with them and say, I think what you've designed is great. Perhaps the way you want to implement it might not be how I see the greatest value. So let's work together. So that I think has been the first hurdle that we've overcome, actually finding meaningful problems for it to um, solve. And that's uh, part of that I think is culture. In the US, for example, lots of clinicians engage with industry all the time. Here in the UK, it's it's not common at all. In fact, here there's, there was this um, v great reluctance you know, because it was seen as not really in keeping with keeping yourself pure in a clinician. Uh, but again, how it's same with radiology, same with AI, same with any part of industry and software and hardware and development. How can you want to affect change if you're not engaging in the discussions to do it in the ways that help you? So I think that was one. Uh, very quickly, I, and I have to say this, I, I have raised this as a, a poll on, on LinkedIn as well, so please do um, engage with this. There, there are a few other things. The, the other one is this concept of uh, regulation. Clearly, this industry has to be regulated very carefully. We have um, laws that have to be abided to about data governance, data provenance. We're talking about patient-specific data, so we have to abide by country-specific laws. But what you then have is people who don't necessarily understand what this means and have a safety, you know, rightly they have a safety-first approach, but it's just a say no to everything because it's safer than doing it. Again, instead of working together to find out how we can work to provide the data to make these products useful, without compromising any of the safety mechanisms we built in. And I think the last main one um, is this concept of how do we actually procure these things? How do we get access to them? How do we use them? And again, nobody wants to be the person who's trialed something and it doesn't work. Whereas actually there's a lot of benefit to be gained by saying, we did this, you don't need to do this because actually for this particular use case, it didn't work, but hey, here are the good things that came about it. Everyone tries to keep the successes very open, but the thing, the lessons that are learned under the radar, and the the knock on effect of that is procurement and frameworks are very slow. There's a fast moving, very dynamic field, and yet we have things which take six, nine, 12 months, sometimes more, to go from initial, shall we try something, to actually getting it um, implemented. And we need to change the way we do this to make them a little bit more quick. Uh, and you know, this concept of pilot after pilot after pilot, if you've done something, talk about it, share it. And if you've done something different, you tell me, then between the two of us, we can go to the third person and say, why don't you try a third thing? And in a very short space of time, we've learned about three things rather than me doing it, you doing the same thing. And in the same space of time, we've learned about maybe one or two things and it just takes that much longer. Brilliant, Rizwan. Th thank you so much. You you mentioned really uh, fantastic things in there about like failing. We never been we ne as human beings we don't want to be associated. Is that negative thing about failing? But failing actually in this case in the industry, as you well know, is a good thing. Is a positive a positive thing because we find out what doesn't work and we can move in a different direction or faster in uh, in moving forward. And also, I like what you mentioned about the comparison about the US and. Um, in the UK, uh, about people over there being a bit more involved in, uh, mm. and they so fragmented healthcare everywhere. I mean, the US is a different kettle of fish with a, a truly private healthcare market, but it's also very, very fragmented. The states they got different laws, the care delivery is different everywhere. But it's interesting. Only now we learn that is very important to include everybody in the conversation and do things together. So. But I think we, we came a long way. Look, I want to thank you for your time, for your expertise, these magnificent insights. It's been really great uh, uh, talking to you. My pleasure. It's always great talking to you. Uh, and said your, uh, your YouTube channel is a great inspiration for knowledge, so I'll, I'll keep my eye on it as well. Uh, please do. And I finish, Rizvan, all my episodes in a peculiar way. It's not a question as such, but it's called One Minute of Fame. Over to you. You can mention anything, personal achievements, your professional, a shout out to anybody, your work, 
anything whatsoever over to you to round up one minute of fame. <laughs> oh gosh, <laughs> thank you. You've caught me off guard. Um, so I think probably the one thing which I'm most proud of is I started my career, I went into medicine wanting to stay within medicine and I, and I still do that. But doing the portfolio that I do with staying as an NHS radiologist, doing some consulting on this whole portfolio career allows me the balance of engaging in innovation, some of the cutting edge tech. It's a privilege to engage with industry, but at the same time, continuing my core mantra of providing input to the healthcare service. Brilliant. What a great way to finish. Dr. Rizwan, thank you so much again. Um, I'm going to round up now. It's great to have you here. And also to all our viewers and listeners, make sure you engage with the Dr. Rizwan. I'm going to put his socials in here, his LinkedIn, Twitter. He's a true expert, industry expert. Make sure you ask him questions, connect with him. And also to round up, make sure you subscribe to the channel, Magnificent Content and acknowledge our partners, the digital health platform, Touch V, and our health partner, 10X Health System, and I'll see you all next week.